Hello everyone, my name is Wayne Chatelaine and I would like to again welcome you to the JFrog Swamp Up Conference. Since the conference is virtual this year, we're going to be able to interact and connect over a chat session while the presentation is going today. I want to encourage everyone to reach out on the chat features and ask questions. We can leave time towards the end to get into some deeper discussions if we need to, but just remember it's all going to be done in the chat sessions. Again, I want to thank everyone for joining the session today. Um, in this presentation, we're going to take a look at some techniques to leverage the JFrog Enterprise Plus features and capabilities to create a definitive software library for your enterprise organization. But first, let me introduce myself. My name is Wayne Chatelaine, and I've been with Capital One for over 13 years. I lead a team of software developers and SRE engineers that manages the entire Artifactory ecosystem at Capital One. We centralize the binary management capabilities and help other teams across Capital One deliver great software and great solutions for our customers and associates across the globe. So let's level set on what is a definitive software library. The library itself is a location where we're going to store approved versions of artifacts. These artifacts are gonna be approved for a production release, and approved for use in production environments. It's also going to contain all of the master copies of the software that is developed within your company or purchased from a third party vendor to use in your company's software environments. Let's take a look at the Enterprise Plus capabilities from JFrog that's going to help us achieve getting a definitive software library. Most of us that use Enterprise Plus are familiar with a diagram that's really similar to this. This shows us everything that we get with Enterprise Plus and includes Artifactory, Mission Control, Distribution, Edge Nodes, X-Ray, Access Pipelines, everything else, all the great features that JFrog has. These features are going to help enterprises fully automate their SDLC for software and artifacts from inception through automation, to storage, and to release to production. With all of these features, we're gonna focus on Artifactory, Distribution, and Edge to help us achieve our definitive software library solution. Let's give a quick recap on what these features are. Artifactory is, of course, the flagship product from JFrog. It's sometimes referred to as the database of DevOps. It's one of the most comprehensive storage solutions for binaries out there, and um, it can support many types of build technologies. Distribution is the product that can help enable the delivery of those software artifacts to locations where applications and pipelines can source from them with confidence. Artifactory edge nodes are kind of a scaled down version, read only version of Artifactory with the primary focus being able to distribute different versions of software to locations that are closer to where applications actually are gonna be running. Now that we've reviewed the JFrog products that we wanna use, let's look at what we want to actually accomplish. First, we wanna be able to create a library of approved software artifacts. Next, we want to ensure that production applications are only using those approved artifacts. Third, we want to implement custom rules and custom approval gates that make sense for my enterprise or for your enterprise to determine if an artifact is approved for use. Next, we want to automate all of this in the software delivery pipeline for your applications. And finally, we want to look at some opportunities to curate our library of approved artifacts to ensure it's fresh, maintained, and kept up to date. One of the first things we need to do is define our repository model in Artifactory. For the purposes of our definitive software library, we just want to generally align with the recommended best practices from JFrog on creating repositories. We want to create virtual repos that will contain an aggregation of our local repositories for publishing our custom built artifacts, as well as our remote repositories for sourcing our external or third party artifacts. We want to create our repositories that align with teams and are organized by package type. 
and we want to have different repositories for either our life cycle stages of our environments, like a dev, a test, or production repo, and so forth. We also want to make sure that we can promote artifacts between repositories. For example, we want to promote artifacts between non-prod and prod after testing has been completed. And generally, we want to have our artifacts from our remote repositories also go through a promotion or some kind of quarantine process. And for those artifacts, we want to make sure that are gonna stick around for a long period of time. We wanna make sure that those are copied from our caches into our local repositories. Next, let's take a look at the different stages of the distribution workflow that's enabled with Enterprise Plus. There are three main stages in the distribution workflow. First, we wanna create a release bundle. This release bundle will contain all of the artifacts that we want to distribute. Next, we're gonna sign that release bundle to ensure it's immutable and cannot be changed during the distribution process. Then we want to distribute the release bundle, which will move the artifacts in the release bundle out to our edge nodes. Now for the purposes of our definitive software library, let's look at some examples of techniques that we're going to leverage to certify that an artifact is approved for use in our organization. For example, we're gonna want our artifacts to pass a security scan and a license scan. For our custom built artifacts, we're gonna want them to pass a static code analysis and probably a dynamic application scan. We might also want to ensure that our artifacts are configured against our enterprise standards. We might also have something like an enterprise blacklist that we need to make sure our artifacts are not on that list. We might also have specific metadata that we want to make sure is applied to our, our, to our packages, like that the testing team has completed their review or that our tech lead or our product owner has reviewed the artifacts as well. We might have a specific signing service that we want to use it for our enterprise or that our artifacts ownerships is attributed correctly and available in all of our enterprise reporting. Or that maybe there's some exceptions that have been applied as well. We wanna make sure that those are reviewed and also available on our artifacts. Again, these are just some examples of rules that we might want to use to ensure that our artifacts are approved for use in our organization. So you might be wondering how X-Ray fits into this picture. We know that X-Ray is great for evaluating security vulnerabilities and license compliance for our artifacts and artifactory. But for our purposes, we're gonna use X-Ray to push a little further left so that when a developer makes an initial push in artifactory, we can have X-Ray provide some more immediate feedback to our developers. But we're gonna to wanna to enhance and augment those capabilities available in X-Ray with our own sets of custom rules and we're gonna do that as part of the distribution process. Now, how are we going to do that? We're gonna create a custom API that provides a wrapper around the capabilities in Artifactory and distribution. There are two API endpoints that will help us enable a custom certification process for our artifacts. First, we need an approval API that will orchestrate all of the calls to those external systems that can provide a posture on the approval of our artifacts. We will want this to execute asynchronous calls to those systems. And then once those artifacts have passed through all of these certification gates, this API will push those artifacts through the distribution workflow. We'll also wanna make sure that access to the distribution API is restricted to only our API use cases. We'll also want to have some kind of status check endpoint which will allow our delivery pipeline to check in and ensure that all of the approvals have been collected before proceeding with a production release. We wanna have a status check API endpoint so that the pipeline can continue with other operations because checking through all of these other systems and certifications may actually take a little bit of time to complete. Now let's pull it all together with our pipeline automation. Our pipeline will publish our built artifacts to our main repositories through the normal processes that we're all used to with Artifactory. Then we will have our pipeline invoke our custom API and invoke our custom rules to certify an artifact. Once all those stages have been completed, 
it will invoke the distribution workflow to publish those artifacts to edge nodes. Once the custom rules are invoked, the pipeline itself can continue on with other operations if it needs to. For example, might need to do some performance testing while this is going on. Once it runs through some other operations, it can check back in with our status check API to see if that certification process has been completed. Part of our status checking is to also confirm that artifacts have reached the des their destinations on our edge nodes and that they're actually available for downloading. Finally, once the artifacts are certified and available in edge, the pipeline can then pull those artifacts from the edge nodes as part of its normal deployment. Now we should have ourselves our definitive software library in Artifactory Edge. Edge will contain our custom software packages and all of our third party packages. The distribution process will confirm that our artifacts have been certified against our organization's rules and that they are good for use in production. On top of that, we've automated the entire process and integrated it into our CI CD delivery pipeline. Let's take a look at a diagram that shows these components in a different sort of fashion. When the pipeline is ready to perform release, it will invoke our custom APIs that certify that the artifacts are approved for use, and then invoke the distribution process to push those approved artifacts to edge nodes. From there, they can be sourced with confidence that they are good for use in production. So what can this look like on an enterprise scale? Here is where we can see that our pipelines invoke the certification process. Now, what's interesting in this diagram is that we can deploy some better logical network isolation if we need to between production and non-production. Maybe even for some of our rules, we want to invoke some of those before we actually do a production release. Maybe we want to do that before we do a QA release. Or maybe we want to have our non-production environments source only from our non-production certified edge nodes. And our production environments can be isolated to just our prod edge nodes. Again, all of this is about giving us confidence that our production facing edge environments will only have those artifacts that have been approved for our use. One last piece we wanna to add to the process is curation of the edge environments to ensure that our artifacts remain in an approved state. One way of achieving this is by expiring our artifacts. During that certification process that we talked about earlier, we can actually add metadata to our artifacts that indicate when they expire and when they need to be recertified again. Then we can have some sort of offline process to remove those artifacts from edge nodes. You can actually get really fancy with this too. For example, we can expire artifacts every 90 days and we can begin sending notifications to those owners that their artifacts will be expiring soon and that they'll need to rerun them through that certification process again. Or they may just need to run a new build cycle and produce new artifacts that can just be run through the certification process. It doesn't necessarily have to be a time-based approach. This is just one example of how it can be done. Um, another example is we can actually detect when new versions of libraries are available and they've been a release, which makes the old libraries irrelevant and they just need to be updated as well. So what does this lifecycle look represented visually? Here you can see that we're gonna invoke a build to publish our artifacts to Artifactory. Then we're going to invoke a release. But before, we were, but before we release, we wanna send those artifacts through our certification phase. Once approved, we can distribute those artifacts to the edge environments and then execute the release using the approved artifacts from edge. Finally, we'll want to expire those artifacts and restart the cycle again to ensure that our library is kept up to date. So to recap what we reviewed today, we wanna to create a definitive software library for our organization to contain our list of approved artifacts. We also talked about how we can set up production releases to only use those artifacts that have been approved. 
we looked at an implementation for creating a set of custom rules to certify artifacts. Then we talked about how we can automate the entire process in the build and release pipeline to ensure we have a definitive software library. And finally, we looked at some options on expiring those artifacts to help curate our definitive software library and keep it up to date. So to wrap it up, I wanna thank everyone for attending my session today and give a big thanks and shout out to Jay Frog for giving us this opportunity to present at Swamp Up virtually this year. Thanks.